Do you accept that Joe Biden won the 2020 presidential election? I accept that Joe Biden is the president. Do you accept that he won the, the election by more than 7 million votes and defeated Donald Trump by 306 to 232 in the Electoral College, a margin that Donald Trump called a landslide when he beat Hillary Clinton by the same numbers? I think that our election was uniquely polluted by these indiscriminate mail-in ballots. I think that this was the first time in America's history where the mailbox beat the okay, ballot Do you box. think there's any evidence that there was electoral corruption or fraud that materially altered the outcome of the presidential election, and where is that evidence? I believe that had mail, mail ballots not been sent to people who had not requested them, that Donald Trump would be sitting behind the resolute desk. Okay, right but now. you don't think that there is, legally speaking, I know you're a lawyer because you went to the great law school, William Neary. Um, you, legally speaking, there was no election fraud or no election corruption. Do you, no. do you, well, let's put it this way. Do you agree that 61 different federal and state courts, including eight judges that Donald Trump appointed himself to the federal bench, have rejected every claim of electoral well, I, corruption I just, or fraud that have been I, yeah. advanced. Do you I, agree with that? I, I don't. And the reason is those claims are not evaluated because in many of the circumstances you reference, jurisdiction was the principal question. So I think it requires a review of the procedure. Do you have process. any case authority in the land of those 61 cases or any other cases where a court has determined that there was electoral corruption or electoral fraud that materially uh, affected the outcome no, of the election in any state in the no, union? No court Do you has, have which, one? Which I believe is a real failure of the judicial. I think our, the Article III courts failed our country by not exercising more jurisdiction over those questions. Now, there's a difference in whether or not fraud existed and whether or not there's an adequate remedy. And I think also a number of those cases were kicked on well, remedies. No court has said that fraud existed, and so there's no I, remedy because there's no violation, well, right, Mr. Right, right, Gates. Right, but What's up, everybody? Major retired Richard Ojeda here. And man, I love watching a good beatdown, especially when it's people like Matt Gates. And when it comes from someone that I admire and respect, like Jamie Raskin, well, that's top notch. I despise Matt Gates. He has no values, no decency, integrity, or morals of any kind. This is the type of beatdown that has me sitting up and cheering with the biggest smile on my face that you can see from all the way across the room. And I know I'm not alone when I say that we all need a hell of a lot more Jamie Raskin in our lives. Now, I don't know him personally, but I've been on several Zoom meetings that he's been a part of. And every single time he speaks, no matter who else is in the Zoom, everybody basically shuts up because this guy is always the smartest guy in the meeting by far. He breaks down each argument with such precise clarity and execution that has everybody just shaking their heads in awe and agreement while we take notes to try to absorb as much information as we can from this guy's brilliant legal mind. It is an honor and a privilege to be in the same Zooms with this guy. I really would love to meet him one day without a doubt. And in fact, uh, I'm going to be reaching out to some people, some of my friends in Congress to see if we can actually make that happen. Now, I think Jamie Raskin deserves all the accolades in the world and then some. You know, he doesn't even beat down Matt Gates with emotional comments or even raises his tone or anything like that. He looks him straight in the eye and just obliterates his stupidity with facts, all while keeping a crisp, calm, cool composure. Now, Gates, on the other hand, is a frat boy that we all despise and for good reason. Florida Congressman Matt Gates insists the plea deal involving a close associate has nothing to do with him. Today, Joel Greenberg is expected to plead guilty to several federal charges, including child sex trafficking. Gates is also under investigation for possible violations of federal sex trafficking laws. He has repeatedly denied any law breaking, but Greenberg's cooperation could lead to more legal trouble for Gates. He tries to squirm his way out of it by quoting Steve Bannon. I mean, are you kidding me? Steve Bannon is the only person that you can think of that may be able to help you get out of this situation? Gates, we all know who you are, and we all know what you did, and we all know who you rub shoulders with, and we all know that you are an absolute creep who will be seeing the inside of a jail cell very, very, very soon, and it has absolutely nothing to do with politics. I know that day is coming, and so do you, and you better hope that Jamie Raskin is not the prosecutor in your child daggone rape case. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.